All right. Hey there, Church Photographer Nation. In this episode of the Church Photographers Podcast, how do you help your volunteers feel appreciated? We'll explore a few ways to make this happen from the simple to the elaborate that you can keep your volunteers happy, fulfilled, and engaged. Uh, but first, I'm Rob Lauder. I'm Connor Strickland. And, and this, this is, is the Church, Church Photographers, Photographers Podcast. Podcast. All right, man. So welcome back to Church Photographer oh, Studios. Glad to be here. Uh, here we go with a brand new episode. We're going to be talking about how to help your volunteers feel appreciated. Yeah, because huge the last thing that you want to do is to burn out your volunteers. To yep. make sure feel like they don't matter, to make them feel like you don't care. And so these are going to be some simple tips. It could probably be a real short episode. Yeah. Uh, but value packed. Don't let the lengthy episode throw you off. Um, about how to help your volunteer teams feel appreciated. Yeah. You know, I lead a volunteer team. I am a volunteer. Yep. We got to make sure that we are on in sync. Yep. And so um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. First, let's hear from some friends of ours and we'll dive into it. All right, man. Ways to help your volunteer team feel appreciated. Yeah. Can't go and say enough about this. No. Because, um, you know, we, we I work with a lot of volunteer team mm-hmm. leaders. Uh, we have our church photography leadership cohort. And one of the things that we talk about is how to invest yep. in your team. How do they make them feel equipped and encouraged? Uh, I've served on volunteer teams, man, where yeah. I've just been like, I'm just showing up and nobody knows that I'm here. Nobody, nobody knows what name. I'm doing. Yep. Yep. So, man, how, uh, for you as a volunteer, like how uh, how does that feel like when, when that happens? Yeah, it's tough as a volunteer to feel like you're not appreciated because here you are volunteering your time, your talent, your skills, um, especially when it's something like this where it's also our full-time jobs is mm-hmm. to be create is in the creative industry providing photography video um, etc so then to volunteer that and take time away from where you could potentially be working with a client or, or something like that mm-hmm. to volunteer in a church setting and then to not have anyone even recognize that you're doing it or they think it's expected of you or something mm-hmm. um, makes it a little bit harder makes you get burned out and uh, one thing I'm always afraid of is am I going to get burned out from doing volunteer work that is going to burn me out from doing my full-time gig mm-hmm. as well um, so yeah, that's, that's something we're going to jump in today and really just like, explain yep. how do you prevent that burnout? Cause all of us, whether we're leading a team or we are the fo- the photographer on the team, mm-hmm. we've experienced burnout one way or the other. Yeah. So before we get there, let's maybe talk about some signs of burnout, like yeah. signs that we know that we are, um, probably needing to invest a little bit more in our team. And the first, I think is like, if, if just like when you feel like yep. you are carrying a lot of the load, yeah. when the, uh, the enthusiasm that may have once been there is no longer in your team. When, uh, when you feel like you've got to push and initiate yep. everything, when you don't have leaders stepping up yeah, to help. That's co-lead. a hard one. Um, those are some that's like one uh, one area of sign yep. that you need to invest in your team and help them feel appreciated. Um, another one, like I've noticed just with our team, is like when uh, team uh, team members start to um, stop asking questions. Yeah. Like when they're asking questions, when they're engaged, I know that I'm doing my job as a leader mm-hmm. because they are pushing themselves. Yep. They are obviously learning new skills. Um, when they stop signing up as frequently for assignments, yeah. I know that something's going wrong. Um, and so those are all some red flags that I look for. Um, when you find yourself in that position, like the choice that you make and the decisions that you make afterward, I think are going to be critical to the longevity of your team. And so there's two things that you need to, to, to consider here. One, triage, like mm-hmm. what happens when that moment arises. And then two, um, regular maintenance. So yeah. how do we make sure that the car is not breaking down on the side of the road? How do we make sure it runs smoothly um, for the duration so that you're not running into the issues? Yeah. Um, let's talk about um, triage first, yep. and then we'll dive into maintenance and some specific ways that you can help your volunteers feel appreciated and equipped. Um, so triage, like... Um, I ex- I've experienced this in multiple areas of leadership, both as a small group leader, also as a volunteer team yep. leader, um, also as a supervisor in my workplace. Um, I work, you know, work at a church. I manage a team, and um, you know, from time to time, conversations are brought up. Hey, I don't feel like I'm being valued on the team anymore. Mm-hmm. Hey, I don't feel like this is really where I want to be. Um, had one volunteer uh, who uh, signed up, did maybe one or two shoots, fell off the grid for a while. And then finally, like you mentioned earlier, um, she's like, hey, I, I do this professionally. I mm-hmm. shoot professionally. I just want my serving opportunity to be something that um, 
that is uh, life giving to me yeah. and not feeling like my job, like yep. not feeling like, like a chore. And in that instance, as a leader, I was like, absolutely, I think that's the right thing for you. Yep. So what, number one, you got to consider like what's the right step for that person who's expressing that yeah. and take it on a case by case basis. Yeah. Like we all want to keep our volunteers. Yeah. We all want to make sure that our team's growing, that when we have an assignment, we've got people there. And uh, so losing someone feels like a failure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's one instance where um, you need to consider in that triage mode, um, what do I do for this person to help them to find their best next step? And if like, if it's like, oh, hey, I, like, I'm feeling uncommitted in general, it's like get your button in gear and get on this team and get to work. Yeah. Um, and let me help you and encourage you yeah. uh, in that. Uh, but sometimes you just got to let them, let them go too and find them new opportunities. Yeah, and that brings up a good point is that sometimes your best photographer is going to be someone who does it full time. And those are people that you're going to want to be at most of your events mm-hmm. to cover. However, as a leader, you're going to need to be able to recognize that, look, they are doing this full time. Mm-hmm. So maybe they don't want to do every single event at the church. Maybe they want to volunteer in another aspect at the church so that they're able to serve in a way that isn't the same way that they're working 40, 50 hours a week. Um, and that's just a good thing as a leader just to be able to recognize of, hey, you're not losing them from our team, but you're helping them get plugged in into someone that is going to be life-giving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and sometimes it's like just uh, giving them a, a break Yeah. and say, hey, can I call you for a special event? Yep. Can I call you for a one-time thing? Yep. Um, one of the things that we ask all of our volunteers on our, inbo- or our, our onboarding forum is how often do you expect to serve mm. um, because some people are like gung ho they want to serve two or three times yeah, a week <laughs> yeah. and others are like hey all I've got the bandwidth for is like once a month or once a quarter Yeah, and that's okay I just need to know that and yep. know that expectation so that when I'm looking through assignments and I'm like we, we send out an assignment roster and people could sign themselves up yeah and so if I, I see, hey, like, you know, uh, Michael hasn't uh, volunteered in, in two or three months. Oh, but he only said he wants to serve once a quarter. Yeah. So I'm not going to see it as a red flag until it's been a little bit longer than yep. that. And obviously, we don't want to be finding ways to bring our team into deeper levels of engagement, mm-hmm. not only with serving, but like we serve unto the Lord. And the work that we're doing is to reflect the glory of yep. God's doing in our church. And so uh, we want to encourage that sort of growth, but we also want to honor those boundaries now let's take a quick break and then we'll talk about some practical ways that we can help our volunteers feel appreciated perfect all right man back with some practical ways to help our volunteers feel appreciated we know the signs of burnout we know how to address um you know that triage situation how do we keep that car running how do we invest in our team and do that routine maintenance to make sure that our team is running Um, so let's talk about the first one let's talk about encouragement yeah the first one is encourage is encouragement and affirmation This goes so much further than you think it might. Um, A couple real practical ways to actually implement this is notes, note cards, give them an actual card, handwritten card, Um, give them praise, let them know, oh, you're doing a great job or you're using your photos. Show them that one, they're appreciated, that two, you really are actually using their craft. If you have a team of five photographers, don't only use one person's photographs, try to use the teams, try to keep it, kind of out there for all of them to see their work. Um, yeah, and thank you, Cars. Like, I uh, I spoke at a conference uh, a couple weeks yep. back, and then I received to our church a thank you card from somebody who I don't even think I connected with yeah. at that event, and just saying thank you for for speaking, and here's how it helped me. And I was like, whoa, okay. And, that, yeah. you know, and like we talk about at the end of every every episode, yeah. when we get reviews, uh, uh, good reviews, uh, we uh, it, like it's what keeps us going. Yeah. And I think that's true of any volunteer position. Yeah, and then like we were saying earlier, oftentimes you feel like you're going unnoticed as a volunteer. This is a great way to just kind of out of nowhere be sitting at home, check the mail or something, and be like, oh, wow, you know, like I am appreciated. And who knows, that could have been a bad week or something, and that, that could have just been the extra encouragement to be like, you know what, I'm excited to show up to, to, to church this Sunday and actually volunteer. Yeah, one of the things we say around our staff at our church is that we, we kind of assume that everybody's going to do really good work. Yeah. And that's why you're here. Yeah. Um, but then uh, when you're doing really good work for a really long time and you don't hear it because it's assumed, it's going to be like, well, is my work as good as I think it is or yeah. other people have said it is in the past? Yeah. Um, you know, do I, do I have a place here? Um, do I, am I actually making a valuable contribution? Mm-hmm. And so that's where that actual stopping and not assuming, but telling somebody, hey, you're doing a really good job. Yeah. Um, can go a long way and not just like you know it's easy to take that cynically as like a pet on the back like hey buddy you're doing really good yeah. but like say like be specific Being intentional like one yeah. hey i see that you did this and that made a difference in this other thing 
Um, I just want to say good job for that. Yep. And be that, that specific versus that, hey, good job, buddy, you know, kinda, I think goes a long way. For sure. And then recognition, too. Yeah. Like, Recognize them in front of the team. Um, hard hair, don't play favorites. Don't always like, oh, Rob, you're doing great, Rob, and then leave four other people mm-hmm. out. But recognize people in front of the team and also honor your beginners because they're going to come into this one. They're coming in as a beginner. They're coming into a community that's already existing potentially. Um, they might already feel like they're not up to the level that they're supposed to be. This is a great, great way to honor them, get them connected. And ultimately, you're growing in fellowship and community um, rather than just another group of photographers. Yeah, it's all about honoring them where they are, too. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, whatever they're like, I've got a. Uh, six-year-old in the house, I've got a four-year-old in the house, and I've got a five-month-old in the house. Man. All of them are at different levels of development. Yep. And so when I, pr- I find that when I praise my uh, middle daughter, my four-year-old, for you know, like, hey, you learn how to spell your name, um, and you learn how to write your name, and my six-year-old is like, oh, I can write, and all these other things. Yep. I was like, yeah, and you're also six, <laughs> uh, like almost seven now. Like, that's not surprising yeah. for you to be able to do that. That's great that you can do that, but I'm specifically complimenting her, uh, my middle child, for um, for doing the thing that's uh, that was a big deal for her. Yeah, big learning learning hurdle. Yeah. So if you just focus on your stars or even like compare to your own strength, this is where like as a leader, you got to get yourself out of the equation. Yep. I can't be like, yo, I am the best photographer on this team. Yeah, uh, definitely. Because one, you might not be. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the best photographer. On my <laughs> team. Um, or it's like that will also be like soul crushing yeah. to the person who's like, well, I'm not that good. Yeah. Do I not matter? Like we were just talking uh, on, a, on a previous um, episode, I think, about uh, you know the volunteer who's like, you know, I feel like I'm going unheard mm-hmm. because uh, my work's not getting recognized yeah. or, or whatever. So um, recognize according to their level of ability. With yep. my five-month-old, it's like, you didn't spit up on me today. Yeah, congrats. Good. <laughs> Good. Yeah, it's, and it's like, well, you know, nobody rewards me for not spitting up. Yeah. <laughs> that's because I'm developmentally <laughs> at a place where I'm expected not to spit up. Yep. So recognize based on uh, where they are. Uh, next thing that we could do, next category, is to uh, add a personal touch mm-hmm. with events. And this is something that we are um, very deliberate to do with our team um, every two months. We host one an onboarding event for new photographers, yep. but then immediately after that, we invite the entire team in to um, one introduce the new photographers mm-hmm. to the team and say, "Hey, you're part of something bigger, and it's not just you at your campus doing your thing." Um, but then two also to um, to give them that uh, community and face to face interaction, Dublin, um, to create spaces for your volunteers to be in community. If that's not a physical space, uh, we also have a Facebook group mm-hmm. that we maintain. And uh, we share links and uh, ideas and, and encouragement there. Um, and then, yeah, you know, it's like if you're listening to this episode when it's released, Christmas time is almost here. The last thing you need is one more Christmas, Christmas party. party. But hey, it might not be a bad idea if you got the space in your calendar to do it yep. to do some sort of like special outside of mm-hmm. the church, outside of even just the routine training events and whatnot. Do something special. Do a dinner. Do a hangout. Yep. Go bowling. Um, have some sort of team building a, 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 a event that um, creates uh, camaraderie, that increases morale, that mm-hmm. increases that sense of belonging. Because all of those things will help your volunteers stick around better, but then also produce better work. Yeah. Like if they feel motivated and they're excited and they're not just going through the motiv- the motions, then they're going to produce a lot better work for yep, you too. Most definitely. All right, and then the last thing uh, that we have to help your volunteers feel appreciated, uh, and it's kind of on the lo- same su- same lines as events, but mm-hmm. uh, an extra step further, is invest in training and equipping. Yep. Um, like on those bi-monthly meetups, what we're doing is we're hosting a workshop most of the time, unless we need to take a break and do some just casual fellowship time. Um, but I like uh, go back two episodes. We've mm-hmm. got 15 workshop ideas for you. That's uh, and if we're doing it every two months, that's like two and a half years yeah. of workshop ideas that you can just go copy, um, take the ideas, fill them out, lead them with your team, um, host those workshops because in so doing, you're able to do a couple of things, and it's not just like, hey, I'm the expert again. Yep. I'm not just giving you all my knowledge, you silly little you know, <laughs> newbies. Um, it's uh, bringing pros and amateurs alike into an environment and then letting them interact together. Yeah. So um, when we do technical workshops, 
um, our, I, I reached out to my pros specifically. I was like, mm-hmm. hey, can you be here? Because I know that you're going to be able to teach somebody something that they don't know yet yep. that I might not see. Yep. And so that brings them all together. Um, so go back, uh, get that 15 uh, workshop idea episode. Uh, and also that's going to be in a freebie vault too at churchphotographers.com slash freebies. Go there, download it, um, print it off, fill it out. Add you know add your own flavor to mm-hmm. it and lead workshops, lead training events for your teams. Um, but then if you uh, like you know we we get a common question like what happens if I'm not a photographer? Yeah. Like how do I lead my team? How do I equip them? How do I train them? Um, and we'll probably do an episode on that before we too will. long. Yep. Um, but one specific way is like in uh, in a couple months in early 2020, we've got our course library coming yep. out, and so we're going to be it's going to be me and some other experts. Uh, teaching these courses, uh, teaching DSLR fundamentals, teaching how to shoot in poor light, mm-hmm. teaching uh, you know staff headshots, all these different courses um, that you don't have to be the expert by investing in that. You're investing in your team and you're saying, hey, I value you. And even though I'm not a photographer, I know that you need to grow as a photographer and yep. use some resources to do that. So keep an eye on those. They're coming up in early 2020. Can't wait to get you involved in those and get that content into your hands. But man, we got a lot of production between now we and do. then we to make busy. that happen. Um, yeah. So if you have any ideas for how to keep volunteers motivated, there's a couple things you can do. Mm-hmm. Jump on over to our Facebook page at Church Photographers, and um, just join in the discussion yep. in the comments there or on Instagram. Uh, we've got a growing Instagram community. Uh, our friend Seth Muse just gave us a yep. shout out a little while back and uh, added twenty or thirty new photographers to that community. Um, so we pump out content, you engage in the content, the comments, um, and, uh, and just share your tips that way. Also, if you got some other tips, uh, podcast at churchphotographers.com is our direct line. We've got a mailbag episode coming up. If you are listening to this when it is released, uh, I think that's going to be next week. Yep. Uh, December 17th. It's going to be on a, it's going to be on a Tuesday. Um, so keep an eye out for that and we'll be answering your questions live on Facebook Live, but then also on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, How else can they engage with us and help us feel appreciated for the work that we put into this? Yes, you can uh, subscribe to us on YouTube as well as at our podcast on iTunes, um, the Church Photographers Podcast and Church Photographers on YouTube. Like, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. Um, And yeah, please leave us a review and we will be more than happy to read it um, here at the end of the episode like we've been doing these past ones. And here comes up another one because I just want to make sure that we are drawing attention to these because uh, you are putting yourself out there by uh, sharing this content. And so we want to honor you by uh, sharing your feedback. So here's one um, that that we got uh, a while back from Mary. We might have even read this one on the podcast before, but I just love this. um, And this so represents Mm -hmm. the heart behind what we do. We got to share it every opportunity we can. Where can I begin? Um, I'm not a photographer, but part of my responsibility was to start a photography team like we were just talking about. I kept putting it off because I had no idea where to start. Just listening to the first three episodes has helped me take the first steps to actually starting, and we've been able to go from a team of zero to four. We still need to help. Uh, for, we still need to help them develop their skills, but we have a great foundation. So much, guys. Or thanks so much, guys. This is exactly what we're talking about yeah. in this episode. This is um, you investing in your team, creating a culture of of, uh, of learning, creating a culture of development, um, and really helping your photographers feel appreciated. Yeah. So we hope you're going to take this episode and do just that. Until then, I'm Rob. I'm Connor. And this is the Church Photographers Podcast.